Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Here is Arslan Seigel from Department of Genomics and Bioinformatics, Cholistan University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Bahawalpur. Today we will discuss about uh, computer drug design and how computers and the computational power help uh, uh, to design different drugs uh, and uh, how this methodology is helpful for uh, as time time effective and cost effective process. As uh, it is uh, nowadays, as you know, that there are so many uh, so many uh, drugs work and people are working to design some drugs and uh, conventional method is very costly and time effect time time consuming so uh, researchers just jump into the computer drug design uh, there are different methods for computer drug design and different approaches are used so we are going to just uh, overview all these approaches so we can understand the overall uh, uh, overall uh, overall the methodology of computer drug design and how we can quickly learn the methodology what is in actual computer drug design or you can say bioinformatics it is the part of bioinformatics bioinformatics is a field of science in which uh, computational power was used to solve the biological problems and the computer drug design is in actually method that uses the computational power to discover and design different types of biomolecules or compounds against different diseases by using by using a white type or mutated proteins or different mechanisms so it plays a very crucial role in medicinal chemistry and in computational chemistry to understand the behavior of the uh, compound with the protein. Before that, we have a conventional uh, drug design method in which uh, usually uh, many years, uh, researchers spend many years to understand the behavior of a, per, uh, of a compound or to, uh, to design a compound or develop a drug against a disease. So it usually took billions of uh, uh, USDs and uh, many time consuming, uh, usually one decade, minimum one decade, and sometimes it just prolonged to two, two decades or three decades. Many researchers just spend their whole life to work on one library, compound library, and even and could not get uh, good results. So in uh, conventional drug design method, we have two uh, phases. The first one is the discovery phase and the other one is developmental phase. And in the first phase, discovery phase, we have target identification and uh, target validation that first of all, we have to identify a target that is this protein is directly involved in the disease or not. Sometimes the protein is not directly involved or not the specific receptor of that specific disease. However, researchers just uh, work on it and spend much time on that. So for for computer drug design, you have to be expert in uh, bioinformatic analysis and uh, medicinal chemistry. Then you have to jump in it. So after that, we have uh, uh, lead of identification and optimization. Then we jump into uh, preclinical uh, studies that took much time. Uh, years and uh, decades sometimes then we just go to the clinical phase one and clinical phase two and three then there was a long story of fda approved drugs that how we can uh, approve that drug so for these uh, long phase experiments we just jump into computer drug design that will be cost effective and that uh, also help you for the accuracy of the compound that early stages and you can find the compound that early stages that is it will work or not in uh, uh, further experiments or and the most important is time consuming and cost com consuming uh, cost effective as compared to conventional drug design method so here we have a pipeline conventional pipeline we use we can change it or mold it according to our experiments and the nature of the experiment uh, we have structure prediction structure validation virtual screening molecular docking analysis ligand uh, modeling and molecular dynamic simulation first two steps uh, uh, depends on the structure of the protein uh, if the protein structure is available and uh, then we do not need to perform three dimensional structure prediction through computational means in experimental uh, uh, approaches we have x-ray crystallography and nmr very famous for uh, solving the three dimensional structure of proteins and uh, it is very costly and time consuming in PDB protein data bank, there are almost 200,000 protein structures are available that includes also the structures of other organisms except human. The, not only human, other organisms are also, uh, the structures of other organisms are also present in PDB. So in human, there are almost 1 million proteins after post-translation modification and at transcriptome level, it is almost 100,000 proteins and uh, uh, the structures are uh, very less as compared to available in the human body. So if we don't uh, afford or if we cannot afford or have not expertise in X-ray crystallography or NMR, we can jump on uh, three-dimensional structure prediction through computational means and validation of those, uh, those uh, predictions structures through homology modeling threading and ab initio 
in emoji modeling we just uh, use a template that are that is already uh, solved through x-ray crystallography or nmr we just retrieved it from pdb depends on the score of the template uh, through blast and then we just use that template to predict the three-dimensional structure of the target protein and if we could not get a good template then we jump into threading approach in threading we just uh, uh, cut all the uh, available structures into small threads or folds and then we use that for three-dimensional structure prediction and if we uh, could not get a good thread then we jump into uh, in uh, ab initio approach that is the most unreliable approach uh, in which we just uh, start from the scratch and we use different uh, uh, approaches to uh, mold the structure and predict the structure depends on the residue available residue of the protein and then we have to simulate that so it is the most unreliable method then we have to validate the structure through uh, different uh, evaluation tools and we have to check the backbone torsion angle phi angle psi angle alpha elysis beta sheet so after that we can decide this structure is reliable or not a good structure we need almost uh, three to four weeks to predict a good structure through in silico means Usually researchers just spend uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes or an hour or sometimes just apply it, uh, just uh, send the sequence to online servers and got the structure and think that it's a good one. No, they have to work on it. They have to understand that this structure is liable or not for further experiments. Then we have virtual screening approach uh, uh, in conventional method. Usually researchers just got the library of thousand compounds and then use that thousand compounds for uh, for years to understand that is it is working on against a disease or not. So in uh, virtual screening, high throughput virtual screening, we just uh, took the libraries of millions of compounds in and analyzed those compounds. Uh, against a specific disease or a protein in uh, four weeks or sometimes three weeks if we have a good computer having good computational power and if we have good theoretical approach and grip on the virtual screening there are two types of virtual screening uh, ligand based virtual screening and structure based virtual screening <coughs> excuse me in ligands based virtual screening we just use the available ligands or compounds and then screen those compounds against the specific protein or disease and in structure based we just use the three dimensional structure of the protein and the nature of the structure so we can screen the library after that we have a molecular docking analysis that is the most powerful tool in bioinformatics if someone knows how to use that usually conventionally people just dock the compounds without knowing that uh, uh, the protein needs blind docking or targeted docking flexible docking soft docking rigid docking and which type of docking experiment is needed for this experiment so we should know all these docking first and then we know that is this docking analysis is reliable for this specific protein or a disease in which we just check the diff different poses of the ligand with the protein that how it interacts and how many forces are involved in this interaction. We also have uh, uh, modeling, uh, ligand modeling also we can say it uh, uh, pharmacophore modeling ligand based and structure based in which we use the essential characteristics of uh, specific ligands to design a virtual compound and then screen that uh, like uh, pharmacophore and if we don't have ligands so we use the structure of the protein and uh, check the essential characteristics of that specific uh, amino acids present in the pocket of uh, the, uh, the protein or the binding region of the protein and then we design the compounds again for that. Now we have molecular dynamic simulation and people think that it's a, a very powerful tool. In actual, it's a post-docking analysis in which we check the docking results. Uh, we try to mimic the real-time environment in computer. Like if the protein is a transmembrane protein, then we have to generate a lipid bilayer in the computer and then uh, put our protein there and check the behavior of protein that protein is always in dynamic form in human body so we try to give the dynamic environment to, to the protein in the computer and if the protein is in cytoplasm then we have to generate a cytoplasm clear uh, uh, around the protein so it depends on the nature of the experiment in which we check the behavior of the ligand with the protein and if the beta sheets and alpha lysis are changing or not or the interaction is breaking or not or the interaction becomes stronger or not it it all we can analyze through molecular dynamic simulation so different categories we have for computational uh, drug design uh, in which structure based computer drug design ligand based computer drug design pharmacophore modeling qsar ligand based virtual screening so uh, it, these all approaches are depends on the nature of experiment and the expertise of the researcher uh, that how uh, he or she can utilize all these approaches
So this is a pipeline we usually use for computer drug design. Depends on the nature of the experiment in which we also check the uh, admit properties, physiochemical properties, pharmacokinetic properties of the protein, and uh, we check the Lipinski rule of five and uh, weight and uh, hydrogen bond donor acceptor. So sometimes we have to perform QSAR uh, approach. Sometimes we have to use de novo design and pharmacophore or target flexibility analysis. So these are depends on the nature of the experiment and the nature of the protein. So Department of Genomics and Bioinformatics, Cholistan University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences welcomes everyone for collaboration. Thank you so much.